Hey guys, Armagon here. Tonight with a takedown video, this time featuring the PWS Mark 1 Mod 2 series of rifles. And uh, it's gonna, you're gonna be pretty familiar with a lot of this because at its core, this is just another mil-spec AR-15 with one major catch. This thing employs a long stroke piston system. Uh, so basically think of an AK-47 or any other variant of an AK. Uh, it's got the long stroke piston system and that is actually what has been adapted to work inside this rifle. Now it's not, you're not gonna open this thing up and find an AK bolt carrier group. No, it's definitely still an AR-15 bolt carrier group, but it's PWS has done some neat things that have, uh, have adapted that system to be, to be run with an AR-15. And this is not to be confused with the short stroke gas piston system like your HK416, your LWRCI, your POF, lots of other systems out there make use of short stroke. There are very few that do a long stroke system and there are there's some differences. There's a couple of pros. Uh, I will mention a couple of those. Um, maybe I'll, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the cons. I'm sure there are some cons as well, but uh, nonetheless, there are some pros and I'll, I'll talk about those today. If you want to learn more about this rifle system, you please check out my, my part one on the video series. This is part three, though they're all independent. Part one just talked about this specific firearm in, in a lot of detail, actually. I went through the features, the controls. I talked about the internals of the system. Um, some fairly technical aspects, and then I also gave some history and some insight as to PWS themselves and their company and how they work and whatnot. So without saying any more about that, check out video one if you want to see that. Video two was me shooting this thing first person style. I kind of just went through the operation of the gun, the controls, and you got to see it being run kind of, you know, in the first person. And uh, had some issues with it at the range actually. Uh, they were addressed partway through because I dialed in the gas. I, I dialed up a bit, gave it a bit more, give more the system a little more fuel, and then it ran fine. Um, I thought that was the only problem. When I posted that video earlier today, I'm filming this segment um, the same day that I posted the uh, the shooting the shooting segment. The shooting segment I filmed three and a half weeks ago, uh, which was good timing because I avoided a, a, a certain ban on some stuff that went on in Canada. But that was that worked out well. However, at the time I hadn't researched the system at all yet. I just I had the gun. Wanted to take it up to the range and shoot it, took my camera along, and we filmed. So I got the initial impressions and I wanted to get that initial run of the gun. Uh, since then, I've I spent obviously a lot more time researching it, and I came to realize the gun is meant to be set up with an H2 buffer. <laughs> I do not have an H2 buffer in here because this is not an out-of-the-box gun. I got my upper from the west coast, I got my, my lower from the east, and clearly the gentleman that had this uh, lower did not have it set up to run with a PWS upper. Uh, again, those are all set up to be run with H2 buffers. This was obviously set up for something else because it was the incorrect buffer. And uh, I didn't know any better at the time. That's not an excuse. I take that, uh, I take that accountability that was, you know, it was my bad that the gun wasn't running uh, the way it was because I didn't have the gun set up the way it was supposed to be set up. But nonetheless, uh, we're going to get that adjusted going forward. I'm going to get a proper uh, PWS buffer. And when I take the gun out shooting next time, we will uh, be running it as a factory unit. Hoping to get some more uppers in because PWS has a lot of stuff and uh, I'm really keen on trying out some more of their various things. But let's prove this thing clear and then actually start out with this video seeks to discuss, which uh, three and a half minutes into a takedown video, I haven't even taken it down yet. That's a bit, a bit shoddy. I hope you guys don't uh, flame me out in the contents, comments too badly for that. But uh, I did want to make that comment about the buffer system and the gas system up front, a, uh, a poster of mine Sorry, on the comment section of my shooting video, uh, Ronald Luther, thank you very much for your comment. He was the one that, that mentioned that, yes, the gas system might have been needed some dialing in, but it might have also been a buffer system issue. And I just want to take another minute to explain that uh, the buffer is an often overlooked component. I overlooked it in this case as well. But this is actually part, an extension of your operating system, and it influences that. And you can directly play with this stuff to tune the way your gun is running. And in a gun that's that's this specialized, short barrel, you know, sorry, SBR, uh, those can be challenging of their own accord. And then using an alternative gas system, operating system, I should have really stuck with the manufacturing, the manufacturer's recommendations. I didn't know that I wasn't, but that's again, that's still that's on me. Uh, so I shouldn't, I should have been running this with the proper, you know, the buffer they spec'd. But it is an important consideration to realize that this all works as one system from the gas the gas port's full size, the block, the dwell time that's that's in there, the uh, the length of the tube, mass of the bolt carrier group, and then ultimately the buffer uh, weight and the spring, and even the size of the extension, because there's a rifle extensions, there's carbon extensions, pistol extensions, there's different size extensions. 
and they also impact that. So there's a lot going on in here, and this is largely characteristic and largely to do with an AR-15 system, not necessarily all the others, but it is still, it's still good to know when you're, when you're taking a gun that's been very specifically engineered to work in a certain, certain, with a certain set of components in a certain layout, right? You start changing those things, you can experience different results. So I'm just gonna say that out there. I'm not, definitely not trying to shill for this company or anything like that. I think it's an interesting company. I do like their stuff. A gun, especially like this, should be reliable in all conditions, at least when set up from factory. And this gun is not at all set up as it was from the factory. I changed a lot of things. I had another video dedicated just to accessorizing this gun, which was called uh, Pimp My Gun, actually. I'm still a bit conflicted on that name, but uh, we'll see if anything better comes of, uh, of a title for that. But I changed out, the things I changed out in that video were largely cosmetic and just altered ergonomics, bolt catch, the safety selector, the magazine release, things like that nature. Those are gonna affect the function of your operating system. And that's what the buffer would do. And without realizing it, I got a swapped out buffer in there. And that's, this is my really long roundabout way of explaining that. So now into the gun. So there's your internals, just your standard AR-15, takes all standard AR-15 mil spec parts. Inside here, we have the money maker. This is the system. This is the long stroke gas piston system. This is gonna be my, by the way, this is, this is like my, uh, Posing for the thumbnail, hey? This is this is it. Right here, cool. Anyways, um, this is this is how the system works. This is your piston. This is what's going on inside there. And I'll just pop the piston head off. So you can wherever it's slotted section is here. There we go. Pop that guy off. Looks looks like an ordinary piston. And then you can take off your charging handle. And there you go. There's your BCG. It's all S7 tool steel, it's got a lot of lightning cuts and some other cuts for, for various um, reliability features. I explained those in greater detail in the other video. We have a, H, a Teflon, a nickel Teflon bolt for ease of cleaning. Even this piston uh, rod is S7 tool steel. That is too hard to stake. So they've milled in a little slot in here and then they've actually staked the, the screws into that or the little, the little bolts that hold this to the carrier. They've staked those into that slot so they can't back out. That's pretty cool. And uh, again, as a piston operating system, there's no gas rings on the bolt, so it's just got a free movement there and it's actually got a spring assist forward, which is kind of neat. And this does disassemble the exact same way as any other AR-15. Get our firing pin retaining sp spring out, get our firing pin out, there's no firing pin spring, as you can see. Now our cam pin is gonna come out, which is always a little bit tricky around these gas piston affairs. You gotta rotate it first, 90 degrees, and then it comes out. And there's our bolt and our spring behind the bolt. So typically this is gonna be around the firing pin, right? And that's gonna be on that side, but in this case, it's around the tail end of the bolt, which is kinda neat. And let's just look here, this nickel Teflon, or sorry, nickel, uh, yeah, nickel Teflon, it just wipes up beautifully. And uh, the anecdote behind that, which is what uh, Dean Sylvester, owner of PWS, primary owner, uh, said is that they took out an HK416, they ran like a thousand rounds through it. Afterwards, they pulled out the, the bolt and they just wiped it clean with the cloth. And he's like, we got to have that technology in our system. So they figured it out and they did it. And look at that, like it's just... She's great. She's that it just it feels slippery. I mean, obviously there's gonna be some oil on here, but it feel you can feel that lubricity of the material, the finished coating on there. So pretty cool. And that's it, guys. That's that's really it. Again, I could take apart the uh, the internals a bit more. Also, this O light, pretty slick. I'm loving the system on this rail. Really nice and tight flush. I'll talk about this more in another video. Um, but I'm liking the system how you can just reach up and. Click the one button with your index finger or reach over the top C-clamp and click it with your thumb. There's some good manipulations with this system and I'm, the more I'm playing with it, the more I'm liking it on as a as a side mount on, a, on an AR. It's pretty neat, especially in that uh, offhand location from whatever your offhand is. Me as a righty, it's nice on the right side. Oh, otherwise, check it out inside, pretty similar. There is a larger opening for your piston uh, as this takes up Quite a bit more space for this piston head to travel through than a typical gas tube. And otherwise, there you go.
Nice, nice system. I'm not getting into the adjustable gas block today because they say you barely need to touch it at all for maintenance anyways, maybe once every three to five to 7,000 rounds. And also the CKB-1 muzzle device is carbon caked on here like a little bugger. And I, for the life of me, can't get it off of here. So I'm gonna have to heat it up and then try again. And I don't have my, my heat gun with me here. So that's at work. I'll have to grab that another day and, and give it another try. So this has gone on way too long for a takedown video. All my PWS videos have been super long. Usually my over, my overview was like 35 minutes and usually I don't even crack 20. So that's, uh, that's the show for today, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I will talk to you next time. Armor gun out. Wait, just kidding. I owe y'all a bonus gun. What kind of bonus gun should I have? I wasn't prepared tonight. I'm sleepy. I got it. Ah. All right, bonus time. We have a keg clone, an HK416. Well, this one's actually the MR223. It's an A3 edition, so this will be patterned after the, the new 416A5s. But it's a keg clone. If you want to see more about it, I this was kind of the gun in the background for my Valhalla Tactical Roof video. And I'll be doing a standalone video on this thing real swift, showing how to do a CAG clone, how this one was done, and uh, should be some good fun. So anyways, I've also got videos shooting this gun, um, shooting it, taking it apart, talking about it. So we've got plenty of content on the this guy as it is. Uh, so I'm going to leave that there. If you guys like the content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the things. It really does help this channel. And if you really want to go above and beyond, I'm on Patreon. Um, arm and gun on there and a few extra perks for signing up on there because I do really appreciate the support, better lighting gear, better camera equipment, more ammo to run these things and more on the range. Actually some pretty crazy range upgrades that are going on because in Canada there was some crap that went down in terms of ARs and now I've got to really up my ante to keep shooting them. So got a bunch of stuff that's going on in terms of an on-site range and uh, well we're, we're working through that, trying to get that Trying to get that dang CFO out, freaking COVID-19. They can't even come out and inspect for a range. But uh, working on those challenges, hauling a bunch of railway ties, hauling in a bunch of dirt, and uh, it's gonna, we're going to get through it. So be back on soon. In the meantime, enjoy more content coming your way. Thanks, guys. Armor Gun, out.